This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to Something to Wrestle with Bruce Pritchard. First, before we get started, I want to thank everybody for tuning in to another episode of Something to Wrestle. Uh, today, it's a very special remix episode, picking up where we left off last Friday, covering Shawn Michaels' 1994 and 1995 I also want to remind you that just a couple of days ago, we dropped our Dr. Death, Steve Williams episode, and tomorrow we're going to be recording Kevin Nash part two. We'll pick up where we left off and uh, we'll talk about Kevin Nash's WWF title run coming to an end. And of course his WWF run coming to an end, all the controversy surrounding the curtain call and everything else involved. But of course, we're going to touch on his return to the WWE when he came back as part of the NWO. So the good, the bad, and the ugly of all things, Kevin Nash part two will be recorded tomorrow, or at least that's my plan with Bruce. Uh, and we'll get it out soon after. I also wanted to put a bug in your ear. If you didn't already go check out my world with Jeff Jarrett. Just a couple of days ago, we dropped what I believe to be one of the best episodes we've ever done. I don't just mean on that show. I mean, one of the best shows I've ever recorded. And it was a tribute to Owen Hart. The name of the episode is remembering Owen and it's on the, my world podcast feed. Just look for my world with Jeff Jarrett, anywhere you enjoy podcasts. It is a home run. Uh, I've never talked to someone who is as raw and vulnerable and emotional. It harkens back to some of the great tribute episodes we did here on something to wrestle with Bruce. Uh, this is a very special episode and a side of the Owen story you've never heard before. So check it out. My world with Chef Jarrett and the Owen story. But today we're going to be talking about Sean Michaels, the heartbreak kid himself. Uh, Razor and Sean are going to do their first dry run of a ladder match in a house show in Maryland. I mean, really think about that. That's gotta be one of the great unseen matches, right? I really wish we could go back and, and convince somebody to film all of that stuff. Uh, you know, all those house show matches. Can you imagine how many great matches there are that we'll just never see the light of day? Anyway, we're going to talk about that. How did the ladder match concept come to be? Did it work? What did they like? What didn't they like? And of course we know what's coming next, but it's a very special look at a great time to be a wrestling fan. I mean, this is back in our childhood boys and girls, right? I mean, Right. Wrestling's never as good as what you grew up on. I mean, I think that's nostalgia for movies or music, but certainly wrestling. And boy, this is the good old days right here. Sean and Razor ladder matches. Let's get this party started for the heartbreak kid. 94, 95 right here on something to wrestle. Let's get into it, man. Sean Michaels, 1994. Let's pick up right where we left off. We're going to go ahead and start diving into January of 1994. Um, he's working house shows early on, but I think the very first edition of a Shawn Michaels razor Ramon ladder match happened in Landover, Maryland on January 9th, razor Ramon won that one. And Sean would be quoted as saying this. I don't know who actually came up with the idea. My guess is that Pat Patterson, who always comes up with great ideas, pushed for it. It made perfect sense to do a ladder match because both of us had legitimate claims to the intercontinental title and both of our belts could hang from the rafters above the ladder. Of course, Brett has gotten credit for this over the years because he says that he took the match idea to Vince McMahon because it's something they had done back in stampede wrestling, which of course was owned by Brett's dad, Stu. Uh, Brett said that he asked Vince not to use that match with anybody else. And somewhere in 1992, I believe there was a Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels ladder match. How do you remember the ladder match idea first coming to the WWF and whose idea was it to put Shawn and razor together in a ladder match in January of 94? Well, the idea 100% was Bret Hart's and they had done it previously in stampede and Bret was involved in it. So Brett had brought the ladder match and he had brought it to us before about doing a ladder match, but there never really was something that, you know, a match that fit the ladder concept. So when Sean came back with the intercontinental championship that he never lost, razor had a belt, Sean had a belt. Now, all of a sudden you have a prize that you can hang above the ring and it made sense for the ladder match. So Pat says, why not? Why not try it? 
and you have a logical reason to do it, make Sean and uh, Razor the first ladder match <laughs> for the WWE, WWF at the time. So it was, it was Pat who came up with the idea, and Pat and I both talking about how do we get there. Vince wasn't sold on the ladder match, so we did the ladder match in a house show to see how it would work, and hence Baltimore. January 14th, 15th, and 16th, Razor beat Sean in ladder matches. Three consecutive days of ladder matches. That had to be brutal, did it not? Um, it wasn't brutal for me. I wasn't in them, but I imagine it was brutal for the talent. It was a feeling out process. It was to see if they were going to be comfortable with the match and what kind of a match that they could come up with because we were planning on taking this thing all the way to WrestleMania. So it was to do something different at WrestleMania that hadn't been done before and let these guys kind of get their feet wet with the gimmick match. They were careful not to do it at Madison Square Garden on January 17th. There we would see a Royal Rumble match that was won by Owen Hart. Of course, Sean was in that one. But a few days later, they're in Torrington, Connecticut, and they do the ladder match again with Razor beating Sean. So at this point, you know, we're only 20 days into the month or into the year even. And we've already got five ladder matches under our belt. And that takes us to the Royal rumble, 1994. It goes down on January 22nd from Providence, Rhode Island. And during the razor Ramon IRS intercontinental title match, Sean does a run in and hits razor with the belt and razor would somehow overcome that and then win the match. Of course, we know Sean was in that rumble as well. He came in at number 18 and was a part of Mabel's elimination. And then he and Brett eliminated Thurman plug, the future hardcore Holly. He also eliminated Marty. And then he himself was eliminated by Lex Luger. Of course, we know Lex would go on to be a co-winner of that Royal rumble match with Bret Hart. Sean said of the match, I pulled a Kurt Henning special. I remember watching him in the rumble one year and he was bouncing around all over the place. He almost knocked out, was almost knocked out a million times, but somehow saved himself at the very last minute. He didn't win the rumble, but he got over like a million bucks because the camera was always on him. And I thought that's what I'm going to do. And the spotlight stayed on me and helped me get over. Do you think that this is an intentional and smart strategy? I mean, he's going out there saying, Hey, I'm going to steal the show. I know I'm not slated to win the thing, but when this is over, people are going to be talking about my performance. That should be every talent's goal. Every time someone steps in the ring is to steal the show and make people walk out of the arena only talking about them. That's a true performer and everyone should want to do that. The idea behind that rumble match was we were going to have Sean kind of be the iron man in it and be the long lasting one. He took that to, okay, if I'm going to be in there the longest, I'm going to do the most spots and steal the show. For the rest of January and through the end of February, Sean would wind up losing to razor on the house shows, but let's talk about the February 2nd TV tapings here. We would see Ramon wrestle and pin Sean Michaels after Michaels and diesel collided. And they sort of tease a Michaels diesel breakup, but it doesn't happen. Is this something that you guys were sort of flirting with the idea or was it just a one-off? No, it was just a one-off and it was really kind of to to gauge where they were at that point. And during this time, we weren't ready for diesel to go out on his own yet. There was, you know, the, the working aspects of diesel hadn't really been proven yet. So we still were looking to protect him. This seems like as good of a time as any to talk about the click because all three were involved in this match. We just mentioned how frequently were the guys sort of giving ideas to Vince or creative. I mean, what was their position like in the company? What was the rap on them? How involved were they with their characters, their gimmicks, their storylines chat us up about these guys as the click in early 94. Well, at this time they were no different than anybody else. And here's the difference. They felt comfortable coming to us with ideas and bringing ideas. Some guys didn't, some guys didn't feel that, that they had the access to Vince. And, you know, I, I answered this recently where they said, well, what's, what's the deal with Vince? I was talking to Chris Jericho the other day where I, I told him, you know what? Everybody has the same amount of access. It's whether they choose to use it and whether they choose to go knock on that door and give their ideas. So Sean, 
did that. Sean Diesel, they all came in. They did give their ideas, and they were comfortable doing so. Uh, Sean would write that um, he had known Scott since 1985, of course, working you know everywhere, but the AWA as well. And then he had been tight with Kevin since the previous May. And one, two, three kid ri- arrived on the scene right around the same time as Kevin. So they've all sort of been there together. And Sean sort of credited Scott Hall with being the guy who helped sort of pull the click together because Scott believed that you were supposed to take the young boy under your wing, so to speak. And he learned that from Kurt, that you sort of take care of the young guys because Kurt had done that for him. So they sort of pass it on when Sean Waltman comes in, he didn't really know anybody there. So they invited him to sort of jump in the car with him. Do you think that that's that narrative is right? That it's probably comes from the idea of you take the young guy under your wing. Scott Hall started that and it sort of just grew from there. I think it, that the older guys, yeah, the ones that want to teach definitely I do. I'll tell you this about Scott Hall, you know, uh, my brother, Tom, who had worked for several years, when Tom first went to Germany for Otto Vons, Scott Hall was there is big cowboy Scott Hall. And Tom had to work with this guy by the name of Steve Wright, who was this old, salty, just salty, tough old Brit. And Steve would take advantage. It was funny. Whenever you go to Japan or you go over to Europe, the veterans over there would always try the Americans and felt they were soft. So they'd see how tough they are and what they could do. And they do rounds. And in between rounds, you come back to the corner. And Scott Hall, I remember Tom telling me, Scott Hall Tell him, he goes, Hey man, <laughs> he's hitting you. You got to hit him back or else they're just going to do it to you every night. Go out there and fight. If you got to fight, fight him, but at least they'll respect you. And Tom went out and fought. And then the rest of the tour was simple, but that was from Scott Hall, you know, kind of looking out for the other guys on the tour. In this case, he was looking out for Tom, but I can see that. And that's, that's the way that Scott looked at the business and he always, you know, wanted to give back. Sean also credits Razor with giving him the idea to start using the super kick as a finisher. Allegedly, Scott Hall said, Hey man, that super kick's the best move you've got. Do you remember that being the case? You know, I I don't know if Razor said that to Sean. I have no idea. I'll tell you where the super kick for a finish came from on our end was Chris Adams used the super kick and was one of the first people to use the super kick uh, to any big magnitude. And Sean threw a better super kick than Chris Adams did, I thought. And I thought, damn, why not use the super kick? Because it was so good, he was using it for a spot that that should be the finish. And I remember us talking about it. When I say us, me, Pat, and Vince, thinking that if you're going to do the super kick, make it your finish. Let's talk about February 24th and February 25th. Every now and again, in my research, I'll stumble across a house show result and think to myself, why was this never on TV or a pay-per-view? And this is one of them. Uh, on these dates, we had Brett, the Hitman Hart, and the one, two, three kid teaming up to take on Owen Hart and Shawn Michaels. Can you fucking believe the amount of wrestling talent in that ring? That, that should have been on a pay-per-view. Well, uh, the reason it's not on a pay-per-view is because we had far fewer pay-per-views at that time. And it was, we tried to present something different to the house shows and what we were doing on television and pay-per-views. So yeah, I'm sure it was an excellent match. Every now and again, I give a compliment and I'm not asking you to defend anything. I was just saying, well, no, I'm just saying, I'm sure it was an excellent match. It was look at the talent. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.